Uh, Taylor looked good today. And uh, so he started out these first couple practices getting the most reps at right tackle in the first group. And uh, what I saw in person today looked really good. Now we'll watch the film and detail it out a little bit, but I was really pleased so far. When you say most reps, like what percentage would that be? I don't know. And <laughs> does he get a hard time from the older guys breaking in four seniors and then? Yeah, oh yeah, we do that on purpose, yeah. But uh, <laughs> it's all loving because uh, he's had a great summer. He started to integrate with those guys. And you know, there's an age gap in there, but at the end of the day, he is an offensive lineman and, and he's uh, really starting to grow into that unit and those older guys, you know, it's like the little brother. They pick on him like their little brother. If anybody messed with him, they'd jump all over it. But they mess with him, you know? Yeah. He, he couldn't explain why he said he didn't feel like he'd earned a starting job out of spring. You guys didn't give him one. Can you maybe say what was missing from his game? Well, just consistency. You know, in order to be a starter here, you have to show more than glimpses. You have to do it more than one day and not the next. So what we've asked him is we will call you a starter when you do a day after day after day with consistency. And uh, that's kind of a trademark of some of the other guys and that's how they establish themselves as starters and Taylor is headed in that direction because I think he's had what I would call probably three good days in a row and we'll see if he can string them together because you know the first couple of days of camp I mean let's face it everybody's excited everybody can look good there was no hitting per se until today so now after you stack three four five six days of hitting in a row let's see if he's consistent so you know that's the mark of a good player the depth of the line Mm -hmm. uh, Coach was just talking a little bit about that. Is there a concern there uh, about the depth or guys? No. no. No, I mean, not yet. I mean, we'll go through training camp and then we'll see. But, I mean, we have guys that are physically capable in the backup roles of doing the job. Now we'll see their progress. Are they ready to play today? No, but <laughs> nobody's ready to play today. So the ones have to make progress to get to the game day, and the twos have got to make progress to be quality backups. And that takes place over 29 days. Uh, but there's a, enough talent in the second unit that if they'll make that progress and develop, because we've got some pretty good young players in there as well. I know it's hard to judge only three days in, but what have you seen just out of preliminaries with uh, Evan Lyle so far? Very competitive, very coachable, good strength, and just trying to transition from the Centerville offense to the Ohio State offense because they weren't a spread team. And so some of our techniques and things like that he's unfamiliar with. But as far as building blocks for the future, love him. Coach, is, your, your unit have a, a rallying cry? Is there something you've implemented, a mantra, a way they carry themselves that you want to see from this group that can really kind of carry this team? Um, they're developing a personality? Uh, yeah, we, we de developed a personality last year and we were hoping to build on that and carry it, which is, is that we're going to go out and try to win the line of scrimmage with technique and toughness and a competitive spirit. And uh, that's a trademark of a good offensive line no matter where you're at. And uh, we ended the season with that characteristic. Now we have to restart and build that and develop that again, but that's kind of what we want to be as a high energy, high effort, very tough, physical, competitive, control the line of scrimmage group. Yeah, what is your working number two group right now? Can you can you delineate that? I mean, if you had to put a second line in there, who would it be right now? Uh, you know, we've got uh, Daryl Baldwin out there, Kyle Dotson, Chase Ferris, uh, you've got Born and Elf line rotating in the second group at center. Yeah. And at right guard, you've got Tom Brown working in there. So that would kind of be the starting point for today's second group. And so you feel like there is raw material there. I mean, because. Uh, yeah, those, are, I, I those guys are all yeah. talented guys. Yeah. 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 They, I mean, yeah, they don't walk out of the tunnel and look like, oh, boy, that doesn't look like those are good looking guys that are physically developed and have talent. And so they just have to continue to develop their skills. and. I see progress there. They're definitely all better than they were at the end of spring. If you had to uh, work on building that personality, mm -hmm. you know, it might have been a question mark of how you were going to get there last year. Now you have four uh, seniors. Just what's it like to build on a personality that you've already established? Well, in the past? it's good. It's a lot of fun because, as I say, last year we started from ground zero and worked our way up. Now I feel like we're starting a little bit higher than that and we got to work our way up. Because you never start a season or start a training camp exactly where you left off. You, 
you know, if you don't play football for six, eight months, whatever, you're going to go backwards. And then now we got to build them back up, but we're not as far down this year as we were last year. We're not starting from ground zero. We have some experience. We have some guys who understand the system. We have guys that have been through the off season two years and we have leadership. Last year, we didn't have leadership in our room. Now we got leadership. So all those things are really nice to have. And, uh, you know, I love the guys. I mean, it's a fun group to coach because they love to play football and they love to be coached and they respond to coaching and uh, they're competitive guys. And so, you know, we're just, we're trying to be a, a physical unit. We're trying to lead, you know, use those seniors to lead, lead our young guys and lead the team. We yeah, were talking about leadership there where, uh, you know, asking Jack about it and he was saying, you know, I was with a veteran group, you know, standing out as a leader. He was saying it's more as leadership as a cohesive unit. I mean, is that what you agree with that? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think that we don't ask one guy to lead that unit. I mean, you know, Corey Lindsley's a leader in his own way. Andrew Norwell's developing some of that in his way. You know, I mean, even Marcus Hall, you know, yesterday after practice, we, we every day after practice, we stretch. And I have one of the seniors lead the stretch. And I had, I called for one senior to lead the stretch and Marcus was mad I didn't call for him to lead the stretch. So he wanted to be <laughs> out in front of the unit and lead the stretch after practice. So he wants to have a role in leading. So all of them do, not just Jack, but Jack may be a little bit more vocal than some of the others. You probably asked you, about Taylor Decker. What's, yeah. What have you seen from him so far? What are your expectations for him? Uh, high expectations. Uh, what have I seen? I've seen an improved player, a player with more confidence. A very talented player. I mean, he's got physical skills now. I mean, he can bend, he can move, he's developing his strength and his toughness. So really what we need to see from him is just consistency day in and day out. How confident are you that when very. the 31st comes up? He's your guy. Finish no, I'm very yet. confident that he'll, he'll be where he needs to be. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. They sure. have to earn their way to be my guy.